Okay, so elementary OS 5.1, Hera. Right at the top, I'm just gonna say this. I've managed to set up everything that I would use this system for if I was using it for my own machine, which by the way, I am for the moment. And I have not added a single PPA and I've not installed elementary tweaks. That should tell you a lot of what you need to know about this update. Welcome back. So today's video is going to be looking into some of the changes that have come along with the recent point release of elementary OS. Now the original elementary OS uh, version five Juno came out uh, at the end of last year. Um, so it, this is, this is sort of a quality of life improvement. And if there was a single theme that I could give you for what's going to come in this video, it is around that idea of quality of life. Now, the elementary team don't really snooze between big releases as they are based on the long-term support release cycle of Ubuntu. It means that they only have to make a brand new spanking release every two years. Now, in between times, they're constantly adding features and changes and updates and fixes to their desktop environment and their various apps. The elementary OS project is pretty huge now in terms of just how many components it has going. So here's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna try and break down a bit of an outline here at the top. And uh, if I try to remember to put time codes in, then you can skip to the bits that are interesting to you. So we're gonna talk about the new onboarding uh, and greeter apps. We're gonna talk about the hardware enablement stack that Ubuntu have provided as sort of the new base for this uh, five point run one release update. We're gonna talk about App Center. There's a lot to talk about with Elementary OS's App Center. We're gonna talk about system settings and all of the things that have been added into system settings that kind of alleviates the need in my opinion or for most of the things that I used to use elementary tweaks for. We'll briefly touch on what has been updated in different apps that are first party to the elementary OS experience. We'll talk about files and we'll wrap up with a few minor changes just around the desktop shell in general. Okay, let's get into it. So while I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions along with this release, uh, this is definitely gonna feel like more of a more of an update video rather than an opinionated piece about whether or not you should run this distribution. You probably have your own opinions about the elementary OS project and, uh, and you are more than entitled to those. For me personally, I do really, really like this project. So a bit of positivity is going to come across in this video. That's not to say that there are things that, uh, that I wish could have changed or things that already have changed for the better, in my opinion. Okay, let's talk about the onboarder and the greeting. So basically now with, uh, with elementary OS 5.1, they implemented it as an update not that long ago, but there is a, a new login screen, which I will show because uh, as you can see, I'm logged in here, but there is a new login screen, which looks very pretty. And the wallpaper that you have selected on your desktop shows as another key differentiator, apart from your profile picture for each of the user profiles that you have installed, which is sweet. The onboarder acts as a bit of a modular piece that the elementary team can use to introduce new features into the system. Uh, but also obviously introduce, uh, induct, if you will, a new user to an already installed system. And obviously if you've just installed elementary OS for the first time, you'll also get a list of um, just a curated, like handpicked list of settings that people might want to tweak out of the box. Um, I guess what I'd love to see in somewhere down the future is integration with the onboarder with the with the typical Ubiquity installer. And I, f from what I hear rumored around the place, they are working on a, an improved installer to get away from Ubiquity. Um, and so it'd be great to see some really tight integration between the onboarder app that they have created and an installer to kind of make the whole thing a little bit smoother. Um, so that's that's the onboarder and the greeter. They're just nice little visual polishes for the most part with a little bit of functionality added there as well, especially when it comes to orienting new users around a new OS. So we'll also talk about hardware um, stacks here because this is very, very key and important to me and my decision to actually use this on my own hardware. So first of all, the uh, this uh, 5.1 release is based off, I believe, Ubuntu 18.04.3, or at least the hardware stack that goes along with it. So that means you get the Linux kernel 5.0, and that was from the, uh, I believe, from the 1904 release cycle. And also it will benefit from the hardware stack improvements that come along around February next year, when uh, Ubuntu 18.4 hits its 0.4 release. 
Um, so great quality of life improvements there for one important reason. If you are running, uh, if you are running NVIDIA drivers on your system, uh, it's going to be really important that uh, you enable the hardware stack if you have not already. So for existing elementary OS 5 users, Juno, you will need to uh, like actively enable the, uh, the hardware stack um, uh, updater because out of the box, that wasn't the default way that Elementary OS 5 was set up. With 5.1, you'll now re um, you'll receive all of the updates that come through the HWE updater as they as Ubuntu decides to roll them out. Now, the exciting bit for me is that that means I have the latest Nvidia, the latest stable Nvidia driver 4.35.21 uh, here in the native repositories, which is a huge plus for me because it means I don't have to add any PPAs, and uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so that is great news. Now, um, obviously power management and other things uh, play into the latest hardware stack as well, but that's gonna be typical across Ubuntu releases. It's just nice to see that we've got a point release that uh, kind of uh, enables that next step for hardware down the long run. Again, quality, quality of life being a theme. Okay, so let's talk about App Center. Uh, so App Center is, is key to the whole elementary OS experience. And I am pleased to say that they have put an awful lot of work into App Center. Uh, now, it's not like it's gotten any more complicated or, or any more uh, feature filled per se. It's just that the amount of performance tweaks that they have made to this and, uh, and how quick this feels now is so much better. Little usability things like showing where there are things that are still loading is also really fantastic to see because it gives a lot more visual feedback to the user about what is going on. And they also added these wonderful arrows here to kind of go through different slides of, uh, of the app's screenshots. Now, again, obviously elementary OS being a system that is pr uh, promoting a bit of an ecosystem with it, a bit of an app ecosystem, you will also notice that no matter where you go in the app center, you will always see elementary OS developed apps uh, appear first in the list, including ones that have a suggested um, pay what you want scheme along with them. I'm not gonna comment on this because I feel like we're all over it by now. But, um, but I think it's great because the more, the, like every time I come back to the elementary OS app center, there are more quality applications in here. They're simple, they're minimal, they, they fit right in with the desktop and I am pleased that they are here. The Linux desktop would be so much worse off if it weren't for some of the apps that are surfacing through the elementary OS uh, app center. And again, a lot of the excellent things about these apps is that uh, a lot of them, let's take Notes Up for example, Notes Up is a fantastic app in its own right. And the great thing is, is that uh, it isn't just limited to those on elementary OS, even though those are the people who are immediately going to benefit from it. You can also get this on FlatHub. So go and get it and use it, it's great. So apart from just being a heck of a lot faster, this is also a lot more stable. Uh, the only issue that I had with the App Center was on my first boot after installing and I was getting an authentication issue. So I just closed it and I restarted the computer and it's fine, I haven't had any issues since. Now let's talk about the headlining feature and the one that I personally am most excited about and that is side loading from FlatHub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up FlatHub here on the, uh, on the web browser and, uh, and basically, this is how seamless this is. I wish this was the case for every other distribution. So when it comes to uh, flat pack support, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. And most distributions default to using the GNOME Software Center, enabling the flat pack backend, and then you have to enable FlatHub as a repository by either downloading a reference file and then the Software Center dealing with it, or, uh, or adding it through the terminal. Now, the great thing is that this time around, let's say I'm gonna try and install something that I haven't already installed. Let's go with uh, Inkscape, because that'll probably take a while. So the very first time you want to get anything from FlatHub, um, now a new user probably wouldn't know to go to FlatHub. And there's a reason that Elementary OS doesn't want to encourage people to go to FlatHub to get their apps. It's simply made for the people that know what they're doing and want to get it anyway. So. I will go to Inkscape on flathub.org because I know where I wanna get my applications from and I go install and it'll download the reference file to my system. Once that reference file has been downloaded, I can actually open it then with a new app called Sideload. And here's what it looks like. It'll pop up with this little thing saying install untrusted app. Now what, I'm, what I am gonna say is that they could have been a lot more alarming with this uh, like you're committing some kind of crime if you went ahead with this. 
They don't. It's just a simple pop-up that says this app is provided solely by its developer and has not been reviewed for security, privacy, or system integration. Here's what I like about this. It informs the user without scaring them away. At least it does in my opinion, I don't know. Now, the first time that you add something from the FlatHub repository, it will also add a third line to this little list here, apart from saying the download size will be about this, updates to the app will not be reviewed, and the third one will say uh, that other apps from this repository uh, will be added to the app center. You tick, I understand, you hit install anyway, and you get a lovely little progress bar just saying where it's up to in the installation process. Now, the other cool thing is that now that we've done this once, when you next log in, at least that's how it worked for me, when you next log into elementary OS and you open up the app center, now all of the applications that FlatHub have in their repositories are gonna show up here in the app center. So here's my thoughts on this. First of all, this gives so much more flexibility to an operating system that only comes out every two years, because that means now you're gonna get uh, up-to-date software from some of the biggest names in open source without having to worry about adding PPAs or anything weird like that. Yes, it's not as clean and simple as just taking stuff straight out of the Ubuntu or elementary OS repositories, but it does install and manage software in a way that's siloed and it's a little bit more secure than adding a billion PPAs to get up-to-date software. I think the way that they've integrated it into the App Center feels very mature and it works really well. All right, so let's move on to the system settings. So the system settings, my here's my thoughts. Basically, um, there are a bunch of accessibility features that have become a lot more visible to the user. Uh, however, when it comes to uh, an everyday person who doesn't necessarily look for accessibility settings, uh, everything just looks a lot more consistent now. So desktop settings, we have a few tweaks in here to turn uh, window animations on or off panel translucency and adjust text size without having to install elementary tweaks. We've got a very simple uh, a pop up here in the language and region settings to be able to complete language pack installation which I think is fantastic. And as we go through the settings now, you'll notice that most of the settings are consistent across each individual component. There's better keyboard shortcut support, including a closed window one, which is the one that I was most interested in. And again, some more accessibility features here for the keyboard itself. Mouse and, mouse and touchpad have also undergone some, uh, some nice tweaks here with the same kind of layout. What I will say though, is that the notification center seems to have a very definite border, um, or at least when you first open it up because of this scroll bar. Whereas when you jump into the, uh, when you jump to the mouse and trackpad settings, because there's no scroll bar, oh, and now it's there, that's super weird. Okay, I'm gonna say that's probably a bug because at one minute there's a border and the next minute there's not. Uh, my printer is automatically identified and it's here ready to use. I can simply turn it on, which is fantastic. And also Bluetooth pairing has uh, undergone a bit of work as well. And it seems fairly solid. I haven't had any issues with Bluetooth thus far. Online accounts is something that I feel like is at a bit of a holding pattern. We haven't seen a whole lot of work here apart from uh, something that I'm gonna talk about in files in just a moment. Uh, so I, it'd be great to see some extra work put into this so it actually integrate with mail, contacts and calendar in one foul swoop. But I think that's on the wish list. The date and time also has an automatic time zone locator now where if you have location settings enabled, you can um, jump in there and automatically set the time zone, which is pretty cool. Um, so the rest of this is all pretty straightforward and it's what we've come to expect from a spit and polish release like elementary. Okay, so all of the apps have undergone a little bit of um, a little bit of a nip and tuck along the way. Calendar has been redesigned so that it has a sidebar with upcoming events. Uh, and it's a little bit easier to hit the touch targets and also the calendar widget up the top here is a little bit more functional as well. Much more similar to how uh, Gnome Shell does things. Um, it is still a little bit clumsy to try and add online calendars if they're through Google or if they're through Outlook, um, but I believe they're also working on that along with the online accounts integration. So uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, music, videos, photos, all of these have undergone a little bit of a spit and polish visually, and uh, they also use a consistent color theme so that if you're dealing with media, like photos or videos, uh, then you'll be able to see the uh, sort of a dark theme enabled out of the box. Whereas some of the other apps such as music, which are still won't remain open for me, 
uh, it has a more of an orange highlight to, add, to match the icon. One of the biggest things that they're focusing on across a lot of their apps and the desktop itself, which is where I'm gonna end today's video, is on keyboard navigation. Uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to provide uh, keyboard shortcuts on a lot of the options that they're gonna have in and throughout their apps. And so you can expect to see a lot more keyboard shortcuts um, making their way into the desktop as time goes on, which is why the default key binding for the super key uh, is, uh, is the keyboard shortcuts pop-up to try and get people familiar with how this works. And obviously these are customizable. You can change them to how you want. But uh, the only other thing that I'm gonna mention from the desktop itself's point of view is uh, is that the, the support for, um, because of the fact there's such solid keyboard navigation, it makes mapping those keyboard shortcuts to uh, to touchpad de gestures really straightforward and simple. I'm gonna throw a link down below to uh, to a post that I found super, super helpful. But um, basically there's, uh, through a startup app that I have enabled called Fusma, I think, uh, I could be totally pronouncing that wrong, uh, but Fuzuma is uh, is a great little tweak that works alongside the lib input devices uh, library to allow you to put um, touchpad gestures, multi-finger gestures, things like swiping back and forth across desktops with three or four fingers, uh, things like going into the, the multitasking view, all those kinds of things uh, are all really, really helpful. Uh, when it comes to making a desktop feel more fluid. Now that's nothing really too much to do with elementary apart from just super consistent keyboard shortcuts with the exception of if you change the launcher setting to uh, to just the, um, just the super key, it seems a little bit iffy. Whereas the super key plus spacebar, which is the default binding for the launcher, uh, that is rock solid every single time. So again, could be a bug, don't know. Uh, the last thing that I'm gonna mention before finishing the video is that um, files, um, the, some of the progress bars have undergone a little bit of visual tweaking just to make them a little bit more neat. And, uh, and a big thing that they are still working on is a cloud provider API that will allow uh, different cloud, uh, cloud file syncing services uh, easy access into the file manager. Um, this is to alleviate things like Dropbox support becoming increasingly crummy from Dropbox's side and uh, a standardized API would make it a lot easier for developers to create uh, easy integration with uh, not only elementary, but also GNOME as well. So it'll be great to see that. And I believe Nextcloud is going to be one of the first, uh, at least that's the example that they're, that they're using in their release notes, that Nextcloud file syncing will, uh, will work really well uh, inside the Pantheon Files app. So that is all well and dandy. Basically what this means for me personally, and this is where I'm gonna land the video, there is enough uh, there is enough full featured support built into elementary OS now where it uh, it no longer feels like a, um, like a restricted experience. I think uh, elementary OS and the shell Pantheon have always had a, a minimal and sometimes interpreted as restrictive workflow to, to how they run things. Um, and for me personally, I really dig it because it helps you to focus on the thing that you're working on. Uh, but for a lot of people, it was a big turnoff, especially coming based on Linux, where you can kind of do whatever you want with it. Uh, now, for me personally, I always tried to tread a bit of a middle line, but there was always a point with elementary OS in the past where I would end up installing elementary tweaks from a random PPA. I would end up bringing a bunch of other apps and services and, and keyboard tweaks to try and make the desktop work the way that, uh, that I was comfortable with. Whereas now with accessibility settings, with Flatpak support built into the App Center, an up-to-date hardware stack that gives you the latest NVIDIA drivers, the only real thing that I'm considering I'm gonna have to add a PPA for would be Lutris. So elementary team, could we please get Lutris in the repositories? That would be amazing. But apart from that, there is, uh, there's literally nothing else that, uh, that I've had to uh, sort of futz with this system to, uh, to make it work the way that I want it to. So yes, you're still stuck with single clicking, not double clicking. And yes, that you're not, you don't have minimize buttons out of the box, but I kind of stopped using them a while ago. So while your mileage is gonna vary and you still might not, uh, this project might not necessarily work for you. Um, I think it might for me, just for the moment anyway. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and uh, we will see you all in the very next video. Peace out.